Now for table number three, uh, which is your summary table for the calibration of the pipette anyway, you'll have to make a summary table for the calibration of the graduated cylinder. And of course it will look very similar to this, except for it will just say graduated cylinder here, and you'll do all of these calculations. Now I only did the one milliliter one, and um, for the one milliliter, which we will find is 1.00 milliliters, the average mass and standard deviation of H2O, average milliliters and standard deviation of H2O, let's go ahead and do those. I have my six values, my six good values. I'm ignoring my three values that were not, that, were the, that led to the 0.96, that was too far off. So these are the six values, the good ones. And uh, I want to average them. And so I'm gonna to go to Microsoft Excel. I'm going to enter those six values in without units. I put in 1.00, Excel tells me one. Let's see, one, two, three, four, those are my six values. Now I wanna find the average. So I type in equals average. Click and highlight all my values. Hit enter. And my average is 1.00. Uh, I'll get back to writing it down. And my standard deviation, just the values, not including the average, remember. 0 0.02 it's gonna to round to. So uh, let me write those down. It's gonna be 1.00. And yours could be 1.01 or 1.02 or down to 0 0.98. Those are still considered close enough. And uh, let me get back on screen here. Those are still close enough. Um, doesn't have to be exactly one. Mine worked out that way. And then, uh, I got, uh, sorry, 0 0.02 grams as my standard deviation. Remember, standard deviations only have one sig fig, which this one does. And the decimal point of the standard deviation matches the last decimal point of my number. And the point of this lab, by the way, is that these little pipettes, as plasticky as they are, can actually be used very accurately if you draw your own line on it. So that's why we're calibrating this. And you're gonna need 1.00 milliliters very accurately for future labs. So make sure you do this well, as I'm sure you are at this point. Let's see, average milliliters and standard deviation of H2O, okay. So we have our average grams and standard deviation. Now to get this next column here, you're going to take each of these values and divide it by the density. So I have 1.00 grams. I have my density. Let's see, so I actually have 20.3, 20.1. Oh, so 20.2 is my average temperature. So T equals 20.2 degrees Celsius. And at my table, 20.2 is 0 0.998365 grams per milliliter. 0 0.998365 grams per one milliliter. And I think we know what we're gonna get here. 1.00 divided by 0 0.998365 still 1.00 milliliters. And if you did the same thing here to the standard deviation, you'd get the same thing too, except that now our units are in milliliters. And perhaps you understand why we use 1.00 grams per milliliter as the density of water. So even though it's not exact, it's very close, and the difference rarely, if ever, will affect our calculations. Now, error is a new calculation. Error is our experimental value minus the correct value. I have been very fortunate here that my correct value is 1.00, sorry, my average value is 1.00 and my correct value. So this is gonna be 1.00 based on that, milliliters. 
minus 1.00, which is my correct value, and I get 0. And technically, to 3 sig figs, 0 divided by the correct value would still be 0% error. Yours does not have to be 0% error. Yours does have to be calculated correctly. Um, so that's why I stepped you through the calculations. It's all right if it is, but it doesn't have to be. You'll do the same thing here for your 0.5 milliliters. You'll get uh, complete this table. And then you'll, last but not least, do the same thing for your 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. And if you just want to put a third column on this table, um, and actually if you don't use some of the, the tables up above, you can put your data for your graduated cylinder in there, actually. Um, yep, I think that's everything. Are there some questions? Yes, there will be some post-lab questions that you can work on. Those are in your learning management system, and I will let you tackle them and ask me about them when you're ready.